One was killed by Henry VIII, the other was a famous king killer. Both shaped English history and have never been forgotten by it, yet their fates could hardly have been more different. They shared a surname and lived within a century of each other, but were Thomas and Oliver Cromwell related? And why might Oliver not have been a Cromwell at all? This is History Calling, where I bring you new videos every week on all aspects of the past, and the answers to these questions are coming up. Though we aren't sure of his exact date of birth, Thomas Cromwell was born no later than 1485. His father was Walter Cromwell. His mother's name is lost to history, though she was Walter's wife. The couple also had a daughter named Catherine, who we'll come back to later. Having started out his career in France, probably in the army, by the 1520s Thomas was a merchant and sometime lawyer back in England, and in 1523 he became an MP for an unknown constituency. Three years later he was working for Cardinal Thomas Woolsey, Henry VIII's most powerful minister. Woolsey fell from favour in 1529, having been unable to secure an annulment of the king's marriage to Catherine of Aragon so that he could wed Anne Boleyn, but rather than being dragged down by his master, Cromwell quickly entered Henry's service himself. Over the next decade, he climbed through the ranks to become the king's most trusted and influential minister, even being credited by some with having so much power that he was able to topple Queen Anne Boleyn in 1536. Just like Wolsey, however, his own demise was to come about in large part because of the king's complicated marital affairs. Having promoted Henry's fourth union with Anne of Cleves, which took place in January 1540, it soon became clear that the king was strongly averse to his new queen, and far more interested in her teenage lady-in-waiting, Catherine Howard. See my playlist on the Six Wives of Henry VIII, by the way, for videos covering this sequence of events and much more. I'll leave it linked on screen and below for you. Cromwell already had problems with court opponents, including members of Catherine's family, who were looking for any way to get rid of him, and he was scapegoated for the mess that was the Cleves marriage. Though he still held sufficient favour as late as April 1540 to be made the Earl of Essex, this favour wasn't to last, and in the end his fall was as rapid and as brutal as Anne Boleyn's had been. He was arrested on the 10th of June at a meeting of the Privy Council, taken to the Tower of London, and charged with, among other things, heresy, treason, and even plotting to marry the King's eldest daughter, the Lady Mary. He was found guilty by an act of attainder rather than by a trial, and on the 28th of July, 1540, he was executed on Tower Hill, on the very day that Henry married Catherine Howard. He left behind no widow, his wife Elizabeth having died in 1527, but he did have one surviving child named Gregory. Gregory married Elizabeth Seymour, sister of Queen Jean, and possibly the woman in this painting, once thought to be Queen Catherine Howard. But though they had children, Oliver Cromwell was not descended from them. So where did the future king killer come from? Oliver was born in Huntingdon on the 25th of April, 1599, 59 years after the death of the other famous Cromwell. His father was called Robert, and his mother was the former Elizabeth Stuart. The only one of their sons to survive infancy, Oliver was raised with his seven sisters, and attended Cambridge University for a little over a year until his father died in 1617. He married Elizabeth Bourchier in 1620, with whom he had nine children, and was returned as an MP for Huntingdon in 1628, but made virtually no mark in Parliament. In the late 1620s, we know from doctor's records that he suffered a bout of depression, and at around the same time he had a religious conversion to Puritanism. But as John Morrill has said in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, if Oliver had died before he turned 40, he'd long since have been forgotten about. The outbreak of civil war in England between the King's party, the Royalists, on one side and the Parliamentarians on the other changed all that. Oliver, who had become MP for Cambridge in 1640, quickly rose through the ranks of the Parliamentarian army and was engaged in some of the most important battles of the civil wars. When King Charles I was captured in 1646, 
Cromwell interviewed him personally on numerous occasions as he tried to hammer out a deal to end the conflict and reduce the monarch's power going forwards. But as we probably all know, these attempts ultimately failed, especially after Charles escaped in November 1647, destroying any trust the parliamentarians had in him to abide by any agreements made. He was quickly recaptured and, after refusing to abdicate, was put on trial for treason, found guilty and executed on the 30th of January 1649. This is the event with which Cromwell is perhaps most heavily associated by many, though he was only one of the 59 who signed the death warrant, and not even the first one. He would go on to campaign in Ireland and Scotland before returning to England and eventually being named Lord Protector in 1653. Though he was now monarch in all but name, he consistently refused to accept the crown and officially become King Oliver, and he ultimately died in 1658. With him gone, the Republican experiment in England quickly fell apart, and in 1660, Charles I's son, Charles II, was restored to the throne. So now that we've had a brief overview of the two Cromwells and their respective claims to fame, let's turn to the central question of this video. Were they related? Before I give you the answer, if you're enjoying this stroll through history, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, and to ensure you never miss any of my other content, hit the subscribe button and switch on all notifications so that YouTube lets you know when I upload. You can also follow me on social media and Patreon by clicking the links in the description box below. The answer to the question of whether the Cromwells were related is, drumroll, Yes, they were, but as I've already mentioned, not in the way you might think. Oliver Cromwell was not a descendant of Thomas, nor was he a descendant of any male of Thomas's generation who had been born with that surname, just in case you thought I was going to say he descended from Thomas's brother or cousin or something like that. In fact, his claim on the name Cromwell was slightly dubious, a circumstance which even he alluded to sometimes during his life. To explain this, let's backtrack to Thomas Cromwell and his family. You'll recall that I said he had a sister named Catherine. Well, she married a Welsh man named Morgan Williams, and they had a son called Richard Williams. Richard rose to prominence thanks to his uncle Thomas's court connections, even picking up a knighthood from Henry VIII along the way, and at some point before 1538, though we aren't sure exactly when, he changed his surname to Cromwell in recognition of his famous relation. Sir Richard Cromwell, formerly Williams, had married Frances Murphin, and in 1536 they had a son called Henry Cromwell. This man was knighted by Queen Elizabeth I in 1563, and is known to history by the very romantic-sounding name the Golden Knight, because of his famous opulence and generosity. He lavishly entertained the Queen in 1564, for instance, and was known to throw coins to the poor. Sir Henry lived until 1604, and among his large brood of children, his second son was called Robert Cromwell. It was this Robert who would sire the infamous Oliver Cromwell, who was named, by the way, for his father's older brother. Now, there wasn't any formal, legal way for a man to change his name in the 16th century, and Richard Williams' decision to take his married mother's maiden name was certainly unusual. Indeed, it would still be rare today for an adult male to change their name in this way, as it's still more common for women to alter their names, though normally upon marriage. Due to this decision, and the need to avoid any confusion or even legal disputes if it was claimed that the wrong name had been used on an official document, even four generations later, we still find Richard's descendants occasionally identifying themselves as William's alias Cromwell, including the Lord Protector himself, despite all his fame and notoriety. I hope that's clarified for you how history's two most famous Cromwells were related to one another, and how Oliver came to hold the surname despite being descended from Thomas's married sister. As always, a big thank you to my patrons for their generous support of the channel and to those of you who donate using the thanks button beneath videos. Let me know in the comments below which of these two you think is the more famous member of the House of Cromwell, and make sure you come back next week for my next offering. Until then, as always, keep learning.